It's actually quite a funky uh, livery uh, TNT uh, Airways there. It's very nice. So once again uh, on the freighter you've got oops, the main deck uh, cargo. With uh, quite a big door, and the door, as you can see, is uh, towards the back of the aircraft. Um, no windows, of course, except these tiny little uh, holes there. And uh, on the Key other test, test, pass. on the other side, then it's like the passenger aircraft with the uh, forward cargo. Uh, no windows as well on the side, except this little window there to be able to see the wings. I'm ready for the checklist. And the uh, aft cargo as well. As you can see here. Aft cargo and the bulk cargo there as well. Which has uh, a little bit of capacity but not too much. Obviously the, the main bit is the is the main uh, main deck. Uh, where you can actually enter a lot of stuff. That's that. A little uh, two of the aircraft. Right, so he's ready for the checklist. I'll uh, tell him what we're gonna do. So we go from the stand. We're gonna use the uh, transponder. We're gonna reduce the temperature. Uh, Takeoff config is probably gonna be five. Uh, thrust reduction 1500. Accelerating 3000. All the concerns in the world. That's not. Uh, we've got the fuel. Let's do the pre flight checklist then. Pre flight checklist. Pre flight checklist. Oxygen. Tested 100%. Tested 100%. Flight instruments. Heading 117. Altimeter 1024. Heading 117. Altimeter 1. Zero two four. Pre-flight checklist complete. Very good. Boss stop procedure. Are we clear to pressurize? Yes. Okay. All right. So let's look at uh, uh, the uh, trim on the uh, takeoff page. So four point seven five. That's uh, four and a half and four point seven five. So, like always, um, the before start procedure is to uh, set up the uh, hydraulic panel. I'm ready for the checklist. So, the right electric demand pump comes uh, to the uh, auto position, and then the C1, C2 electric uh, primary pump come on, followed by the left electric. And uh, C1 and C2 uh, demand pumps there. Set the fuel panel, uh, the uh, fuel pumps that we need. So, because there's no uh, fuel in the middle, then we don't need to uh, uh, switch on the center pumps. Um, then uh, come down, check the recall. Should only be the uh, engine shut down at this stage. Uh, display the checklist normally, but that's maybe not what he's supposed what he's doing with uh, FS2 crew. Um, what else? Make sure we go 1 to 1 5 there. Uh, the data displayed. Uh, the transponder on that here area. And uh, check that the door is locked. But on the freighter, no door lock. Ah, we've got 10 minutes to go. You ready to go? Yeah? Okay. Off you go. And I'm, I'll be ready as well in the next uh, 30 seconds. Alright, so. Prepare for push. Locking gear. Hollanda traffic uh, quality one Bravo Echo uh, pushing back uh, stand Alpha set. Arlanda traffic, good day quality 2, Bravo Echo pushing back, stand 18, Arlanda traffic. 
So the nose is gonna come to the and left. the traffic, I will co accompany you from stand 37 pushing back. Uh, expecting departure runway 0, 1 left. All engines clear. Start at wheel. Before stop checklist. Before start checklist. MCP. Set and checked. Takeoff speeds. Set and checked. CDU preflight. Completed. Completed. Trim. Set and checked. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Before start checklist complete. Start sequence is two then one. Check. Start the right engine. Starting right. Oh, land the traffic top swift turn five alpha Charlie pushing back from stand six six. Oil pressure. Check. <laughs> That's amazing. Right, that's good. I'm not bumping into you. Amazing. Okay, a little puff of smoke, which actually uh, happens in the uh, real aircraft. Uh, you don't see it so much on the freighter because there's no uh, ground camera, but on the uh, 300ER with the ground camera you've got obviously a view of uh, coming from the back of the aircraft so you see where the uh, where the main gear is and obviously you see a little bit of the, the back of the engines and very often when the uh, engines are started uh, there's a puff of uh, smoke like that. Waiting your confirmation for good engine start. Uh, start the left engine. Starting left. Oil pressure. Here it is. Amazing. And there was somebody else as well. Oops. I heard pushing back somewhere. I hope I'm not in the way, because eh? I'm not really sure. Here it looks like you can maneuver anyway. The I've got crash uh, disabled, so you can bump into me. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Good engine start. Flaps 15. Flaps 15. Welcome traffic, top switch to fly past Charlie, taxi to runway 01 left. We'll check the flight controls up, down. Left. Two truck disconnect. Three two two seven. Taxi holding point runway zero one left via Sulu Yankee Yankee one. Then he's gonna walk away. Choice the pin. Arlanda traffic quality two Bravo Echo taxi via Sulu. X-ray to X-ray tour and we zero eight at Lambda Pass. Okay, he's waving with the pin. We're good to go. Gonna check the rudder pedals. Left, center, right, center. Have a good trip, thanks. Before taxi checklist.
4 taxi checklist. Anti-ice. Auto. Recall. Checked. Flight controls. Checked. Ground equipment. Clear. B4 taxi checklist complete. Hollanda traffic uh, quality uh, 1 uh, Bravo Echo texting to uh, runway 08. Clear left. Clear right. Orlando uh, traffic, just listen by that for Charlie, taking off on way 01 left via the local for Charlie departure. So somebody else is uh, departing from uh, runway 01 left. Along the traffic, I'd like to get 3227, we'll line up and wait runway 01 left for departure on the Northly 5 Charlie departure route, initial time 340. Before takeoff, checklist. Before takeoff, checklist. Before takeoff, checklist complete. Checklist complete. So far, so good. What's uh, your cruising uh, level? Uh, UPPL? Hey, party grind, welcome to the stream. Arlanda, traffic quality 2, Bravo Echo, lining up runway 08. Parking brake set. Runway entry procedure. Check. Along the traffic, line to get 3227, departure runway 01 left. Uh, on hmm. not leave 5, Charlie departure route. We'll plan flight level 340 initially. And here you go. Amazing. Brussels. <laughs> and off he goes. Amazing. 
Right, so as I said, I'll give it a couple of minutes. Oops. So yeah, if uh, you're departing from uh, the same uh, airport, uh, going to the same destination, sometimes it can happen different airlines. Uh, obviously, uh, they will try to uh, to give a bit of a separation already on the ground above all if you've got the same uh, cruise level otherwise then uh, once in the air it's, uh, it's becoming a little bit more difficult for ATC uh, to manage That'll be two minutes, that's uh, good enough, I guess. Let's go! It's about 55%. Take off. Check. Thrush riff. Check. Thrust set. Holland uh, traffic, uh, quality 1, uh, Broadway go, rolling, runway 0, 8. 80 knots. Hold. Check. V1. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. 400 feet. Thrust riff. Check. Atlanta traffic. Enough speed. Check. Seven is static flight level 100 and leaving the area. Bye bye. And all the way. Atlanta traffic. Quality 2, Climb. Bravo, Echo is passing flight level 100 inbound, Sierra Alpha 724, leaving the area, bye bye. Very nice, very nice. Hey, Matty738, how are you doing? Open the speed window and the turn there. Try to keep the turn as tight as possible. Amazing. Even trying to uh, keep the turn tight, uh, it's struggling a little bit to follow the. Uh, of track. Alright, speed intervention cancelled, it's going to 205. Flaps 5. Speed checked, flaps 5. Flaps one. Speed checked. Flaps one. Transition altitude. Altimeter standard. Uh, 
Indeed, it's climbing like a rocket. Flaps up. Speed checks, flaps up. Flaps up green there. Check. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist complete. One thing I didn't set properly is this. 5,000 feet was the transition. So off we go. Hollanda traffic uh, quality 1 Bravo Echo uh, near the override on the PTEV uh, 1 uh, Lima passing uh, flyball uh, 87. Shortcut, maybe to Pitev. Flight level 100. Yeah, the freighter is always uh, really overpowered, above all at uh, light weights. Once it's uh, heavy, it's, uh, it's a little bit better, but if it's uh, not uh, near the maximum takeoff weight. Or at least below uh, 300 uh, tons or something like that, then it's uh, it's quite uh, overpowered. You can't uh, assume uh, too much. You cannot assume. Uh, you cannot use the assumed temperature to reduce the thrust uh, as much on the uh, on the freighter. Always kind of limits it to about 58, 59 degrees. For some reason, so so here we are climbing away. It bound to Brussels. Weather is uh, very nice, and the weather was uh, cavoke for uh, Orlando, and uh, forecast to be exactly the same uh, in uh, Brussels. All the uh, islands near Stockholm. Beautiful. It's a clear day, very nice weather, high pressure in uh, Sweden, so 21 degrees. Summer is here. Seatbelt sign auto. Seatbelt signs auto. Oh, you're already 360 at uh, Coxim. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, you're not too bad, actually. Uh, 1117. You're about 20. 25 miles ahead. That's good. Level. Oh, the uh, ATPL exams, um, it, it's a lot of work. Um, it, it depends also on how you do it uh, because um, I'm not sure in an integrated course exactly what happens. Um, if you do the, the PPL separately and for the PPL there's a few uh, grand exams to, uh, to do. And so you'll have to study a little bit, they'll give you, uh, well, they'll give you, you'll have to purchase like a few books for all the subjects. 
I will give you a little bit of, uh, of a taste of what the ATPL is like. Obviously, the ATPL exams are like much more like in depth, but uh, doing PPL grand exams will give you a kind of flavor for, for what to expect for the ATPL. And uh, so I don't know because if then you do integrated and they, they make you do PPL at the same time or even sometimes uh, you do the ATPL first from what I can understand uh, possibly and then start the flying from uh, from, from from then on uh, it's a little bit different if you see what I mean because obviously you, you've never known you've never done any uh, uh, flying and you've not uh, done any uh, theory before as well so um, well you have to let us know how you're getting on as you said, by the time uh, if you go for the uh, uh, the class in uh, April next year, and then uh, if you don't have to uh, commit like uh, if you don't have to commit financially uh, before before then, it will give you a little bit of time to assess what the industry is doing, if it's uh, picking up, if it's still uh, difficult out there. So it kind of gives you a little bit of time to kind of see what uh, what the deal is. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's um, there's no reason that you know the the situation should improve, but uh, at the same time, you, you never know. And uh, when you see all the all the redundancies like around uh, the industry, then uh, that kind of makes you think that they are a little bit pessimistic for at least the next you know year and a half, two years, because otherwise. They will keep the guys maybe on uh, a long-term unpaid leave or something like that. So, if they if they make uh, people redundant, is that they are slightly pessimistic for at least the next yeah year and a half, two years or something. So, so it's good it's good to uh, to give like uh, yourself a bit of a buffer. You know? uh, if you start uh, next spring, then by then the situation will be a little bit uh, clearer. That's good. Somewhere in this direction. The Swedish uh, countryside with all the lakes. It's a glorious day and not a single cloud. And then I believe we get to uh, Denmark. Then uh, possibly clipping the top of uh, uh, Germany into uh, then uh, Holland. So yeah, so you can uh, kind of uh, assimilate uh, the triple uh, seven freighter to uh, a two hundred LR uh, as far as the uh, the size of the aircraft. Uh, is uh, it's like uh, an adapted uh, 200 LR. Uh, there's only a few uh, differences in the, in the systems, uh, mostly with the uh, the cargo fire system, since you need to account now for the main deck and also for the uh, air conditioning. Uh, where there's a little bit more, and where actually the uh, the air conditioning works uh, much better on the freighter than on the uh, uh, passenger aircraft with uh, the 200LR, 300ER and all these uh, different uh, variants. Uh, of, course, of course the uh, the main deck cargo temperature which will kind of uh, regulate the temperature at the front and at the uh, back of the uh, uh, main deck uh, cargo area. Uh, you get the uh, main deck flow as well, uh, two position, normal and normal circumstances on high if you carry uh, animals for example, you got an alternate vent, uh, only one reset fan uh, and you've got uh, temperature control as well for the uh, lower cargo. Yeah, so on the on the freighter as well you can uh, control the temperature on the forward cargo and on the aft uh, cargo compartment whereas on the passenger you can't so, 
So yeah, just a few uh, differences like that. 12.49 and I'm showing 12.41 but that's without the arrival, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Excellent. I've got uh, Kulu at uh, 1141, that's the next uh, waypoint and about 55 miles. Uh, so you'll be about three minutes ahead. So we're kind of keeping, I took off about two minutes uh, behind and uh, we're kind of keeping the three minute gap at the moment, so that's good. If uh, ATC uh, comes on, then they're not going to panic too much. If there's uh, a three-minute gap, then they can they can keep us like that. Otherwise, when you're like back to back, uh, I know if uh, if I do a uh, control on that sim and there's like two people following each other very close, then it's a, it's a bit of an issue. So that's good to leave a bit of a gap.